Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Year-End Fundraising, Step-by-Step -step Instructions for More Giving This Year. My name is Chris Bechtel, and I will be your host today. Thanks to all of you for joining us. A couple of quick housekeeping notes before we get started. We are recording this webinar, and we will be sending you a copy of the slides along with a link to view the full recording. You can also request a copy of this presentation right now. If you'd like to do so, you can simply text year end, all one word, to 51555, and we'll send this presentation directly to your phone so you can have it, I'll review it, share it with a friend or colleague. We've got a terrific webinar today. Um, we are really talking today about the, the season of giving. So from Thanksgiving to New Year's Eve, American generosity skyrockets, causing more and more people to be more generous with their time and money. So we're here today to talk about how we can get your donors more involved with the nonprofits that you all work with and support over the holidays for these four primary reasons, really to be happier helping others, to feel good about themselves by making a difference, and to be connected to something positive. We all need that in our lives, of course. And to really take advantage of, of tax deductions, this is a great time to do so. So again, thanks to all of you for joining. As you can see, you can type questions directly into the chat on the left. We will be saving about 15 minutes at the end of the presentation, which will run just about one hour. Um, so we will get to as many of your questions as we can. So please do feel free to type into uh, the chat right there. Um, also, if you have any kind of audio issues, you can switch to dial in by phone. So if you're in the webinar platform, you can do so by choosing the more button on the upper right corner of the screen that you'll see and click more. And from there, you can choose switch to phone. Sometimes dialing in by phone solves some audio issues that happen um, over the digital internet connection. Um, so again, also, if you would like to get the presentation, for those of you who are just joining, you can text year-end, all one word, year-end, to 51555, and we'll send this presentation directly to your phone. So we've got a fantastic agenda. It's packed. So definitely um, stay tuned. Make sure that you um, take some good notes. You will, again, be able to review the recorded version of this webinar. Um, so we're looking forward to providing you with some great insight today. Um, we've got a terrific lineup of speakers. Um, Cody Damon, who I will introduce shortly, uh, who's the president and COO of Media Cause, and my colleagues Lindsay Newman and Jeremy Koenig for Mobile Cause. We've got a lot of great content for you. And I'd like to introduce Cody uh, right now. He's going to dive into his section about year-end fundraising and strategy. Cody Damon is the president and COO of Media Cause, an agency helping nonprofits and social enterprises leverage the power of digital to accelerate the impact of organizations and individuals doing good around the world. Cody specializes in digital strategy, multi-channel integration, and data measurement, and loves helping nonprofits through smart strategic communications poised for digital. So thanks for joining us, Cody. Welcome. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for the introduction. Um, we're going we're gonna to dive right in. We have a lot to cover today. Um, so as, as Chris mentioned, um, this is the season of giving. So I'm going to set a little bit of context for us right now um, and, and go over some big numbers, um, numbers that um, I'm sure a, a good deal of people on this, um, this webinar are familiar with. But let's first talk about churn. Um, nonprofits are traditionally go through about 60% uh, churn on their donors each year, which basically means they have to replace 60% of their donor list every year. So as we're going through this webinar, we're really going to be highlighting ways in which um, we can keep um, our churn rates lower um, and, and effectively get more value out of, out of our donors each and every year, and keeping them around longer, because that's really um, an, an important aspect of year end is being able to not just get that first donation, um, but also to be able to keep those folks around for a while. Um, so you know, this, is, this is the time of, of year that most of those donations uh, um, uh, come into nonprofits. This is the, 
uh, the time of year when, you know, culturally, especially here in the United States, where uh, folk, people are focused on giving. Uh, so we know that, you know, it starts on Giving Tuesday. Um, you know, big number there, $116 million uh, was raised last year on Giving Tuesday, and that 30% of all gifts occur actually in the month of December. Um, and then we can even get even more um, uh, focus where actually the last three days of the year and New Year's Eve uh, tend to be where um, nonprofits see the most amount of gifts coming in. So another really important piece of, of context to keep in mind is that you know there's a million and a half nonprofits in the United States. So um, those nonprofits that are uh, creating really effective year-end campaigns and are able to break through the noise are, are really the ones that are going to be successful. So one of the ways uh, that, that you know, we find to be one of the most effective ways to break out of the noise, um, really tactical, is, is creating segmentation within your communications. And, you know, the, the short way to describe this is, is deliver messages that resonate with your different audiences. So the example that we see uh, here on this slide is, is a, a way to segment by age groups. So different age groups respond to different messaging. Um, they may uh, respond on different platforms. Um, keeping that in mind, keeping in mind who the target audience is for your particular nonprofit is really important. And it may, it may be um, uh, a demographic segmentation like we're describing here. It may be more uh, around particular programmatics at your organization. So there's a lot of ways to, to slice it, but the really important thing to remember is that not everyone should be receiving the same message um, where you're really going to be able to be more effective and essentially get more donor dollars um, out of your supporters is to be able to deliver messaging that really resonates with them uh, on a personal level. So let's talk about goal planning for a second. Um, I, this is uh, should be the starting point for any year-end fundraising campaign and, and really setting specific goals as to what you want to achieve. Uh, the, the, the best way that you know, we always do this is to take a look back historically. What has your organization uh, done over the last few years? And, and being really realistic about what you plan on uh, achieving, um, setting goals around your existing donors, right? Those lists that you already have, people that are on your email list, people that are on social, uh, people that you reach uh, via a direct mail program if you're running one. Uh, how do you, what are your goals and expectations you have for those particular segments? And then setting expectations around new donors. Um, new donors are, uh, they're, they're a more, um, uh, more of a challenge to get during a year-end campaign because in a lot of ways, it's going to be the first time that you've reached out to them. So it's really important to you know, set some, some realistic expectations within your organization, um, whether or not you're the one um, you know, creating you know, budgets and creating plans, um, or you're the one who is giving this information you know, maybe back up to an executive director or, or someone else um, who's in charge of budgets. And that's probably another consideration to, to really have locked down uh, before you get into year end is, is one, understanding the goals, but two, understanding the resources it's going to take to accomplish those goals. All right. So as I mentioned before, you know, there's there's a million and a half nonprofits in, in the U.S. So, so you need to stand out. And one of the really effective ways to stand out is to make sure that you are creating a campaign that's branded. Right. And, and, and branding can can take on these really simple um, um, formats. And, and there's a, a, a lot of uh, of ways to roll out a branding campaign. But if we look at these six bullet points, you know, making sure that your campaign has has a name, making sure that there's consistent logos and colors across all the different uh, pieces of content that are a part of your campaign, um, having a, a, a very uh, distinct tone. Uh, using similar photos and videos. Um, these are all really important, but the most important part of, of those branding elements is making sure they're consistent across the different touch points that you have. Um, and this is, this is an issue that we see um, in some of our the nonprofits um, that um, we engage with is that there may be one person who's in charge of email and an entirely different department in charge of social, right? So it's, it's making sure that 
whomever is in charge of your different touch points um, across the organization, that you're all using the same, uh, essentially the same content, that you're all working from the same playbook, um, because this is really, really important. Um, when trying to break through the, the, the noise of, of the year end fundraising cycle in which all these different organizations are, are vying for attention, um, being able to have those multiple touch points with consistent messaging means that, um, you know, you're reaching someone on email. You're, they're also seeing you on social. They're also seeing you uh, on the radio. They're also seeing you, you know, on the different touch points that you have. And it may not be that first one that convinced them, but that second or third one in which they saw um, is, is the reinforcer that gets them to actually give. So the consistency in making sure that you put um, your brand first is going to be really, really important. So s- storytelling. This is um, this is the, the meat and potatoes of the campaign, right? This is, we've got our goals. We know our audience. But the real meat and potatoes is what are you saying? What are you trying to communicate? Um, what is that message that you're trying to get across? So our advice is, is really to make sure, one, um, that it's a consistent message, um, but also that you take advantage of the platforms, right? We, uh, we generally follow a three to one rule, which is basically you want to be able to share um, a lot of content during this campaign, right? You're not sending one email. You're not putting out one Facebook post that just says give. You're sharing content continuously throughout this uh, this time period to be able to make people understand why they should give, um, being able to close the loop, so to speak, on impact, um, being able to articulate where the dollars go, um, being able to articulate why that individual support is so important to the organization. And there's a lot of great ways to do this. Um, you know, raw footage uh, captured on smartphones is a, a great way to be able to make your organization feel real, feel um, like uh, like someone is getting involved on a personal level. So uh, keep in mind that when you're planning out the, the, the storytelling, you're planning out the concepts of what your year-end program is going to be about, be realistic about your resources, right? If you don't have uh, a, a pr- well-produced video or if you don't have access to video, well, let, let's not make that a part of our uh, of, of uh, the resources needed to execute the campaign. Um, and this goes back to that, that initial you know, kind of slide about goal setting. Once we understand what the goals are and we understand what resources we have available, uh, the creative part should be the fun part. That should be the part where you, you, know, you get to look at the resources you have available and see what you can come up with. So effective follow-up, this is one of uh, one of the elements that often gets overlooked, and it's probably the most important uh, for the long-term viability of, of your donor base. So as, you, as you're going through year ends and um, you're, you know, you're getting these new donors, you're re-engaging your old ones, um, and you know, December 30 or January 1st hits, uh, and everyone's taking a deep breath, especially um, um, on the nonprofit side of things, since you've just gone through such a, a high volume period and a high engagement period, um, it, it's often a, a time where there's a lull. Um, but it's actually uh, it shouldn't be because what we want to do is we want to make sure we're thanking people. We want to make sure we're thanking people, you know, tactically. You know, as soon as they give, thank them. Thank them with a follow up email. Thank them on uh, the thank you page with a personalized message. You know, a, a video would be great. Um, thanking donors for uh, supporting your organization, supporting your, your programs. Um, don't make it generic, you know, uh, really get to the heart of, of why their donation matters. Um, but there's also a lot of other ways, depending on the size of your organization. Uh, you may be able to send them a handwritten note. Um, you may be able to give them a call over the phone. But there's some there's some uh, um, some basic ways in which we should always you know, be thinking about and really having that culture of gratitude. Um, you want to be able to thank your supporters throughout the year as well. So this doesn't end on you know, January 1st. You want to be able to relay the messages back on how their donations made an impact with your organization, because <clears throat> what you will have 
out of a urine campaign is you're going to have a connection point, right? You're probably going to have an email address, maybe a telephone number. Um, maybe you're going to have um, a, a new follower on Facebook. So you're going to have that opportunity to continue the conversation. Um, and, and this is going to be really, really important for, for a financial reason too. Uh, being able to get new followers on your list is, is, uh, is more expensive than re-engaging the old ones, right? That's, um, that's kind of uh, the norm for the industry, that acquiring you know, new donors uh, can be expensive. So if, if we're just getting one donation out of them, we're essentially not getting all the value out of them. We want them to be connected long term and, and being able to uh, continue to follow up and steward these individuals, um, not just during the giving process, process, but throughout the year is going to be able to give you actually a greater return on investment for your year end campaign. So one of the fun ways to do this actually right out of the bat is to uh, give updates as the campaign's going on, make people feel like that. You know, that 20 bucks, that thousand dollars, that, you know, that contribution that they gave um, is, a, is a part of a collective, that they're not in it alone, that um, there's a group of, of individuals that are supporting this cause and they're part of a community. Um, that's a big part of giving is, is making individuals feel like not only are they connected to your organization, but that there's others doing it, too. And that uh, as a collective, you're going to be able to accomplish the goals of that organization. So this is an area that I, I absolutely love, and it's, it's the data, because I think this is where um, you're able to get um, a lot more out of, of uh, not only your year-end campaigns, but just fundraising um, in general. Um, it's, it's making those real-time tactical decisions about what's working and what's not. So an example would be, um, you know, you're sending out A-B tests via your email. You know, maybe that first uh, ask that you send out on Giving Tuesday, maybe you're, you know, you're, you're testing out different subject lines. React to the data. If, if one subject line is clearly uh, outperforming another one, then uh, make that adjustment in real time. If there are, if you're running, you know, advertising, whether it's, you know, Facebook ads or Google search or, or any other number of advertising platforms, pay attention to the different variants. Pay attention to copy. Pay attention to photos. Which photos, which copy, which platforms are bringing in the most donations, bringing in the most new donors? Um, those are all decisions that um, shouldn't be left until the end of a campaign to make. Um, it's really about making those things tactically. But I'll, I'll say this. Um, it, it always makes sense to you know, do the download after uh, a year in a campaign's done um, and, and not just, you know, uh, you know, counting the, the, the amount of money that came in, but understanding which platforms were most effective for you, uh, understanding um, which platforms um, have, have uh, maybe uh, behavior has shifted over time um, in which, you know, a certain platform, um, you know, two years ago was, was working really well. And, and now the, another platform may have uh, started performing better. And that's, that's really going to come down to, you know, maybe an audience shift. All right, so I'm going to hand this back back over to Chris now, who's uh, going to introduce our next speaker, Lindsay. Thank you so much, Cody. And again, as a quick reminder to everyone, um, we will be holding uh, about 15 minutes at the end of the presentation here for questions. So if you do have them, go ahead and type them right into chat, uh, and we'll endeavor to get to as many of them as we can. Um, also, another quick reminder. We are going to be sending out a link to the full recorded version of this webinar along with a PDF of the slides. You can get the slides right now sent to your phone. Just simply send a text to 51555 using the keyword year end, all one word. Um, so now I'd like to introduce Lindsay. Thanks for joining us, Lindsay. Hi, Chris. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you, Cody, for that great first section here of our webinar. Um, so I'm going to jump into the tactical side of things here for everyone. Um, so first off, when it comes to year-end giving, obviously this is centered around donations. 
I know all of you out there are trying to get as many donations as possible, and uh, we here at Mobile Cause find that the best way to do that is to make it easy to give. Um, so that means all of the demographics um, that Cody went through, uh, we have you know, the millennials, Gen Xers, our boomers, and our greatest generation, they all prefer to give in different ways. So it's very important that you let them do that, because if you let them do that and they're able to give in the way that they prefer, they're more likely to make a donation. So uh, the different channels uh, that are most common are online from any device. So that means from a PC, from a tablet, or from a smartphone. Um, you can easily do that with a mobile-friendly form that you're linking to people via text message or email or on social media, or just with the Give button on your website. Uh, by checking cash, those are the more traditional forms of giving. Um, you know, someone mailing in a check to your organization, or maybe they're dropping cash off at your office. Um, over the phone, you can have people give their credit card number to you over the phone, or again, you can send them um, a link that they can go to at a later time uh, by Swiper, uh, which is also a convenient way to give in person, uh, or by Text to give keywords are something um, that we here at Mobile Cause offer um, as part of our platform. It's a really great way to get people engaged from wherever they are. As you guys know, I'm sure you know everyone listening, you have your, your mobile phone or your smartphone on you at all times. So what better way to uh, let them give than by sending them a link via text message. Um, as a bonus, you can also keep your supporters updated with your campaign, um, and you internally can easily track your goal with a live fundraising thermometer. Uh, this is a link that lives online, and as donations come in, whether they are made you know, online or via text message um, or over the phone, you can add these in, and the thermometer will rise as you make your way toward your goal. So you can link that on your website. Uh, we have a couple organizations you know, that have done that that allows uh, supporters to follow along with your campaign and see where you're at in your progress. Um, or you can just, like I said, do it internally so the members of your organization know where you're at as well. The second way um, is volunteer empowerment. So volunteers are really important for nonprofits because not only are they the people that you know help you do the good that you are trying to accomplish, um, they're also nearly twice as likely to donate than non-volunteers. These are people who are very closely involved with your organization, and they really care about you and the work that you're doing. Um, so volunteering is one of the best ways to encourage people to make a commitment to your organization, even if they don't have money, and then like I said, later on down the line, they are more likely to donate if they have volunteered to your organization. Um, so one of the ways that you can make it easy for people to volunteer during your uh, year-end giving campaign is to let them sign up from wherever they are um, with you know, those mobile and online solutions that provide them links, um, be it on their smartphone, their PC, their tablet. That way, you know, if, if you have somebody out on the street, you have a street team, let's say, that's walking around trying to get people excited about your nonprofit. You just say, hey, text this keyword. You can volunteer right on your phone. It's easy as that. It's a really great way to get people involved and to gain more volunteers, uh, which is really important during the season of giving. So the next thing that we're going to get into is crowdfunding ambassadors. So crowdfunding um, became pretty popular here over the past four or five years or so, thanks to sites like GoFundMe, uh, you had the Ice Bucket Challenge. Um, different campaigns like that have really gained a lot of traction, have gone viral thanks to crowdfunding. But the great thing about crowdfunding is that it gets people involved who may not have known about or may not have previously donated to your organization. So if you have one person that has donated to your organization, um, you know, maybe once or twice, but they're really looking to do more, but they personally cannot give, what they can do is they can sign up to be a volunteer fundraiser for your crowdfunding campaign. So that means that they can set a personal goal um, and all of the donations are directly remitted to your organization, but they can set a personal goal and then invite their friends, families, social networks, et cetera, um, 
to donate to the cause. So it's kind of like using teamwork to maximize the effect of your campaign. Um, so people can set up their page in seconds. Like I said, the donations go directly and securely to your cause. And um, they're easily shared via social media, email, and text message. And that's really huge for that viral component that I, I mentioned because it, it allows you to amplify your voice without your organization itself having to do anything because these supporters are the ones doing it for you. So corporate partnerships is the next one. Um, this is also kind of a, a different segment of crowdfunding. So um, there's been a huge trend in recent years. Um, I'm sure you know everyone listening right now has, has noticed it. Um, corporations and, and even small businesses are really into giving back. And it's, it's really a win-win if you partner with, with a business within your community, be it big or small, because it allows you to reach their customers who may not have been somebody that you had connected with in the past that your organization had not connected with. And then on top of that, it allows that business to benefit from the added bonus of people feel like they're doing good when they're supporting the business. And then they're also being exposed to your organization. So it's really a win-win for everyone all around. Um, a lot of times employees get involved as well. Employees sign up to be volunteer fundraisers within the corporate crowdfunding campaign. So it's a great way to showcase your partnership within the community. Um, you can embed sign up forms on the corporate website. You can have a, a partner section on your nonprofit's website. Um, so it's really a great way for everyone to get involved and to really maximize that spirit of giving for your end of year campaign. So Giving Tuesday, Cody touched on this briefly, and uh, if you were unable to make our last webinar, that was our Giving Tuesday webinar, I highly encourage everyone to do that. Um, the URL for that is mobilecause.com slash nonprofit dash webinars. Again, that's mobilecause.com slash nonprofit dash webinars, and click on the Giving Tuesday one. That dives into um, really good detail about how to launch your Giving Tuesday campaign, which I'm sure a lot of you are are currently planning for or in the stages of, of um, launching as that's coming up here pretty soon. Um, but for those of you who were unable to make that webinar, Giving Tuesday really kicks off the giving season. Um, so, you know, it's always, always good to start yourself off on the right foot. Um, and in order to have success for Giving Tuesday, you want to keep your call to action simple and consistent. You want to make sure it's really clear cut. And then you want to identify ambassadors. Um, within your supporter groups who are able to amplify your voice uh, in ways that you might not be able to. So this can be somebody who, you know, is a, a very uh, prolific donor for your organization, somebody that volunteers a lot, you know, that's very committed, or just somebody that you recognize might be a good fit for you in terms of their social following or, or the message that they're promoting online. Um, and you're going to want to give these people kind of like a, a, a uh, toolbox, if you will, um, in order to have success. So that means, you know, giving them images that they can post, uh, giving them all the branding stuff, like Cody mentioned earlier, you know, that consistent tone of voice, consistent images, and you're going to want to do that, you know, keep in touch with them throughout the campaign, and then your nonprofit itself will be posting your own collateral and your own images, videos, et cetera, across all your communication channels. Um, encourage your followers to post their hashtag unselfies. So unselfie is basically what you see here in um, this visual that we have on the screen. Uh, they have the hashtag, they say why they're giving, they take a picture of, it, of themselves holding the sign and they post it to their social media. So it's a really fun way to kind of get involved with the Giving Tuesday spirit and then support your cause as well. Um, on top of that, like I said before, with, with um, these different campaigns, it's really powerful to have different people sharing your message to different audiences that, you know, you on your Facebook page or your Twitter profile or your email list are not reaching. So it's, it's new people that are getting involved with your cause for the first time as well as repeat donors. 
And another way to boost your end giving um, is with a live event. I'm sure there are quite a few of you out there that are already, you know, in the throes of planning your year end event. Holiday events, especially, are very popular, be it, you know, a food drive or a gala or even um, a virtual event, which has has skyrocketed in popularity in the past few years, especially um, thanks to Facebook Live. It's really easy to just get the word out, tell people just like you would with the in-person event, you know, we're hosting this event on this day. I hope you'll join us. All you have to do is go to our Facebook page, and then you can have somebody from your organization um, telling everybody about your mission, how their donations can benefit you, and what you're trying to accomplish uh, before the year is up. So. Uh, during that event, you're going to want to use uh, a live live donation thermometer, which is a really great way, talk, touched on a little bit earlier, it's a really great way to show people the progress as it's actually happening. So it creates this really exciting moment. So just think, you know, you're there, let's say at a luncheon. You're sitting there, you have your MC up on the stage, they're making the donation plea, they're telling everybody, you know, the great great mission that your cause has and the good work that you're doing. And behind them, the donations start to roll in. So the thermometer gets a little bit filled up, then it goes a little more, a little more, a little more. And as this is happening, uh, the names that you see here on um, the image on screen would be scrolling. So as these donations are coming in, you're seeing uh, the amount, you're seeing the donor's name, and you're seeing how close you are to your goal. So it creates this really unique, exciting moment of giving that encourages people to give more. Um, and then it also encourages people in, in a way of creating, you know, friendly competition. If you have table one, look, we have three donors from table one. Table two, can you match that? So it's, it's a really fun, exciting way um, to kind of streamline and, and boost your event uh, donations. So the final thing I'm going to get into here um, is the New Year's Eve solicitation. So the number one most popular day of the year to give is December 31st. Sounds kind of funny, but over 30% of all annual giving happens in December, and then 10% happens in the last three days of the year, and the majority of which happens on New Year's Eve. So instead of scrambling you know, at the last minute to get the word out and you're so close to your goal, but you just haven't gotten there quite yet. Um, we really suggest that people pre-plan. So set up um, different, you know, email blasts, social posts, uh, text messages to go out to your supporters um, the afternoon of December 31st. So have your final appeal on there. Tell them, you know, how close you are to, to your goal. Uh, really encourage people, if you can include a, a video, that's a great time to do that here. Um, just anything that you can do to make people the most likely to donate. Um, so like I said, these can be scheduled ahead of time. It's really great. You know, everybody wants to obviously enjoy the holidays with their family. So no need to be rushing at the last minute. Just set these up ahead of time and you'll be good to go. And I think you guys will be really happy with, with what you see if you follow these tactics. And that's it for me, Chris. Back to you. Thanks, Lindsay. Fantastic. So again, everyone, um, there are a ton of resources we've been sharing in the chat. So we'd encourage all of you to visit the resources that we have at mobilecause.com slash resources. There's a ton of infographics as well as the complete history of our recorded webinars. So I encourage all of you after this one to go there and check it out, review some of the stuff, especially Giving Tuesday and some of the examples that Lindsay um, talked about. Um, so now I'd like to introduce my colleague Jeremy, who's going to talk about some of the year-end fundraising channels that you can use and how to do so. Welcome, Jeremy. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, Cody and Lindsay. You guys are pros. For all the nonprofits uh, on the line, I just want to come out and say it, that the mission of this webinar is that all of you would be able to strengthen your year-end fundraising in terms of gaining new donors and engaging the ones you already have with effective strategies, powerful tactics, uh, and, and new fundraising channels to gain um, 
and and to reach all those goals. And so with that, I'm going to I'm going to jump into year end fundraising channels. Now many of you uh, might be doing a few of these. Uh, we actually have seven here. Uh, that we're going to go through, uh, all of which will increase your amount of donors and donations um, throughout the, the la specifically the last 30 days of the year. Uh, the first type of donation we're going to talk about is donations on your website. Um, we designed these slides so that you could, they, they would be very much uh, instructional and in that if you just follow our best practices uh, that we have um, we have gleaned from thousands of nonprofit campaigns, uh, you will raise more donations. So uh, specifically on your website, it's very important that, give, that giving uh, is fast, simple, and secure, and that people can give from any device. Um, the most important part on your website is actually your button. Uh, the Give button that is on the corner of your website, uh, hopefully in the top right on your header that displays on all devices, when you click that, it is extremely important that that leads directly to your donation page. Uh, again and again, we see when nonprofits switch from complicated uh, navigation to very simple one-click uh, to a donation form, we see increased donation amounts and conversion rates. Um, Additionally, these donation pages uh, should be branded for your campaign. It's really important. Um, they can have videos. They can have uh, custom backgrounds. Um, suggested donation amounts are actually very interesting. We have found that the average person that gives on your site will actually give using the second option. And so we actually recommend that you look at the frequency and the amounts as your campaign is going on. Um, because if, for example, in this case, uh, if you increase your donation, your middle donation from 125 to 145, most likely it won't change the amount of people give, but it will increase your, your revenues. Uh, additionally, recurring gifts are really, really um, important. Uh, they are the, the lifeblood of your nonprofit. And so if you have uh, if you have plans to increase recurring gifts, you want to make it as easy as possible. Um, in memory of gifts are really important during the holidays for a lot of nonprofits, um, specifically encouraging your uh, donors uh, and your supporters to go out and make gifts uh, in honor of people over the holidays. is a very popular thing to do. And then finally, custom data collection fields. Um, you want to only require fields that you're going to use. Um, and so if you need to capture really important donor information, uh, whether that be mobile number or uh, email or address or age um, or T-shirt size or, or why they're passionate or whatever, you should be able to do that with a custom field. Uh, believe it or not, mobile-friendly uh, donation pages yield 34% more donation. Uh, now let's talk about donations from email. Uh, similar to your website, the most important part of email uh, fundraising is that people are able to click a donate button uh, to make a gift. So you, the best practice is that you not have multiple calls to actions, but that you have a small amount of text, uh, a clear button with a call to action, and then uh, some type of a, a screenshot or picture. Um, this will continuously yield more um, donations um, because your call to action is not convoluted with a lot of uh, other messages. Um, it's very important for email mark fundraising specifically that you track every donation that comes through email. Um, uh, and then uh, if you want to increase email performance, if you send a corresponding text message, uh, it's actually amazing how many more people will uh, either, res either respond to your email or respond to that text that refers to the email. Um, and if you did not know, now we continues to go up and up. 56% of your emails are read on a mobile device, so it makes it really important that your email is formatted for mobile uh, and that your donation page uh, and your donation forms are formatted for mobile. Um, now let's go to talk about donations from social media. Um, it's really important that you're able to collect donations uh, easily from all types of social media posts and pages. Um, the best practice for this, and it's a little bit technical, is inside of text posts, you want to share uh, your, your specific website donation short link. What this does is it allows people to just click and give, and then you're also able to track how many people clicked on that link to make donations. That only works for 
uh, Facebook and Twitter. Instagram, uh, the only place you can put a donation link is actually in your web URL and your bio. And so we recommend that in all images and videos, which are becoming the norm of social media activity, that you include clear and concise and branded keyword giving instructions. So in this case, you can see where it says text food share to 51555. And all that does is it triggers a text message that sends a link back to the person um, so that they can easily give right from their uh, smartphone. Um, I will also mention that, uh, as Lindsay did earlier, Facebook Live is becoming more and more popular. I, I actually can't wait to see uh, what happens this year of giving through Facebook Live. The idea that uh, you can tell a, a worldwide audience to text your keyword, and then you can recognize those donors as they complete gifts on a fundraising thermometer is amazing. Um, also, I'd like to mention that it's important. Uh, micro donations and micro fundraising campaigns are really important on social media, and we've seen tremendous success when um, when nonprofits ask their followers that they've been working all year to build to just make a small donation, dollar or more. Um, and the idea is that you would gain that donor acquisition and then you would be able to cultivate them into uh, lifelong supporters of your cause. A uh, little interesting stat here that Lindsay added, 78% of potential donors have at least one social media profile. So if you're not engaging your donors on social, um, then you are actually missing out on a huge potential of your donor base. All right, now let's talk about text messaging and specifically receiving donations from text messaging. Uh, the best way to think about it is that text messaging is the only way that you're going to be able to remind people about your campaigns and your content and your communications uh, that they're not going to be able to ignore. Uh, amazingly, texts have a 98% open rate, and the truth of the matter is that, for example, if I wanted to uh, communicate with you while you were on this webinar, uh, and it was extremely important, uh, the only way that I could get your attention is if I sent a text. Um, emails largely go into spam. Uh, social media posts uh, largely get... Uh, lost in the busyness of your, your social media walls. And the truth is that if you're not sending text messages, if you don't have a culture of sending text messages, you are very much alienating a large population of your donor database. Uh, and with that being said, uh, you want to communicate with donors in a way that is not a, a nuisance. Um, too many solicitation asks is bad. It's actually one of the main reasons why people stop giving. And so the idea that you would um, let people know that you want to start sending texts to them uh, and, then, and that you would absolutely follow the three-to-one rule, um, sending at least three texts with compelling content. Um, for example, this, this video that you see here in the example. Um, before you ever ask for money, uh, use text messaging to thank donors, uh, to tell your story, uh, to get people to sign up to be volunteers, to complete surveys, to, to, to sign up for memberships, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if people don't want to receive texts, then all you just instruct them to do is reply stop and they're off your list. Um, if you don't know it, the TCPA actually gives nonprofits in America the special permission to send um, text messages to donors that are in your database. And so uh, one of the really cool things you can do is actually uh, upload your list and figure out how many mobile numbers you already have. Uh, and unlike uh, email um, and other uh, specifically address, uh, mobile number doesn't have uh, has a much longer shelf life because most people hardly ever change their mobile phone number. Um, if you don't know, uh, anytime anyone texts a keyword, so if any of you have texted a keyword on this webinar from one of our examples, actually what it does is it subscribed you to receive messages from that organization, and in, that, and in this case, from me. Um, the other way is that you can start collecting mobile number on all your forms. We've had a number of nonprofits that have been collecting um, mobile number for years, and then they've been able to actually upload those numbers and then start to send communications that have been incredibly lucrative for driving uh, increased participation and um, donations that they otherwise would not have had at all. All right, now we're going to go into more of the traditional forms of communication that you might not think of as digital uh, campaigns. Direct mail. It's extremely important that you make it easy for your donors to go online in response to uh, direct mail. Uh, believe it or not, 35% of donors say they, they want to go online, 
and give, uh, and that's the preferred way that they want to respond to direct mail. There is there is still a large population of the demographic, specifically baby boomers and the greatest generation, um, that they're they're looking forward to your direct mail. And again, uh, multi-channel communication is the key to reaching all different types of uh, donors. A um, couple of little things that you may or may not know, if you include a QR code, uh, the post office will give you a 2% discount on postage, um, which can be a huge saving if you're doing large direct mail sends. Um, and then if you include the your keyword instructions on your visuals um, and you include and you make sure that your main donation page um, donate button links to that same donation page you'll be able to track everything that's made in response to direct mail um, and another tip is that and I have experienced this personally that when you send a text message reminder to hey check your inbox it's amazing how many more people will actually open up and respond to your direct mail Donations from television. Um, many of you, whether you are a one-stop shop or you are a, a huge national nonprofit, you actually have celebrities, uh, people on TV specifically, uh, that are very excited about what you do as a cause, and they would love an easy way to raise donations for your cause. Um, when you pair a keyword uh, as well as your website URL, which has the donate button that goes to the same donation page, uh, you make it as easy as possible for these individuals to be ambassadors for your cause on TV. Um, uh, another thing that we have recently started to see is it is so cool when personalities recognize donor names when they come in on the fundraising thermometer. Uh, it, 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 makes, it makes giving exciting and it inspires a lot more giving. Donations from radio. Uh, we recently had a, an incredible campaign with uh, Steve Harvey, and, and he did what, just what I said, but on his radio broadcast, where he encouraged people to give a dollar or more uh, by texting the word Steve or going to his website. Uh, and as those donations were collected, he read them off in real time on his radio. And unlike television, because radio broadcasts are long and are, and are daily and are more regular, uh, donors can be recognized in real time. And at the end of the day, it's all about how many people um, are connected with your cause. The donation amount matters, but the people are actually much more important. Incredible tool. If anybody on the call has opportunities to promote their year-end campaign uh, on radio, please, please, please follow these best practices for maximum uh, giving. Lastly, collecting donations over the phone. One of the things that we've seen is that a lot of donors actually just want to call in and give you their credit card over the phone. And what uh, a mobile-friendly and secure uh, donation form enable allows is that you can actually have people from your staff uh, type directly type in informate credit card information into a form. Um, if people don't want to receive, uh, if people don't want to give their credit card information because they because of security reasons, we actually have a function called Give Later, where you can type in their number and that person on the other side of the line receives a text message with a link to give, and then they also receive three reminder texts um, that they. Uh, will receive if they don't complete their pledge. Another interesting thing we've learned over the years is that when uh, nonprofits are running phonathons, and whether that be you know a student-run call center at a university um, or a, a group of committee and board members, um, people donors are actually four times more likely to connect with your nonprofit if you call them on their mobile phone. And so using uh, mobile validation to identify those numbers is one of the best ways to strengthen the efficiency and the fundraising results uh, of your fundraising campaigns. And so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Chris um, to start the Q&A section of our webinar. Thanks, Jeremy. Wonderful, and thanks again for everyone uh, participating today. Uh, again, some quick reminders. We are recording the webinar, so we will be sending you all a link so you can review anything you might have missed and, and of course, share with a colleague. Uh, we've got a lot of great questions um, we will get to shortly. Uh, I do want to remind all of you a couple of things real quick. That Mobile Cause provides end-to-end -end mobile and online fundraising software for a new generation of donors. So you can get help with your specific questions from a fundraising expert. 
So I would encourage all of you to reach out directly to us. You can call us at 888-661-8804 or go directly to mobilecause.com slash demo. The team at Mobile Cause is fantastic. You get a dedicated customer success representative who is very experienced in helping nonprofits of all shapes and sizes, whether you're a single person or part of a larger team. Um, we've got experience in helping you find the best way to accomplish your goals. Um, so please do reach out to us. Um, also, I want to mention that Media Cause has a full service fundraising campaign, fully turnkey for 15,000. You can get started fully for the year end. Um, it's creative concept and design, social media advertising, an email series, Google ad grants, copy and setup. It's completely turnkey. All you have to do is click on the link. Uh, Cody's gonna paste in a link or you can simply email him, cody at mediacause.org to take advantage of the special offer, I'd encourage you to do so. I know um, some of his nonprofits uh, that he's worked with are on the line with us and they've had a fantastic experience. So I'd encourage all of you to reach out and uh, take advantage of this, connect with Cody, find out how it all works and how he might be able to help you. Um, so now back quickly to our Q&A. Um, so any of you, if you do have additional questions, um, please feel free to submit them now. Um, I'm going to dive into a couple of them real quick. Um, let's see, first question. Um, but first of all, I, I do know Giving Tuesday is coming up. Um, so, you know, and again, we have a, a complete webinar on Giving Tuesday, but I think it may be helpful for everyone who's still sort of in your final preparations. And, you know, maybe, Cody, this is to you first up. Uh, you know, do you have any thoughts on you know, Giving Tuesday, your experience with Giving Tuesday, and, you know, any thoughts on, you know, what people might be able to do now um, to prepare? Yeah, this is a great question. I think, you know, Giving Tuesday, um, I, I alluded to this in some of the data, you know, it's it's, it's become a, a very um, competitive uh, time of year. Um, and I think one of the important, you know, kind of, I think, aspects to to think about is, is, with Giving Tuesday and with your entire year-end uh, campaign, one of the things it is, is it's really an indicator about how you've nurtured individuals over time um, and, and how well uh, you've done in engaging and stewarding your list so that you can activate them for moments like Giving Tuesday, um, being able to activate them in a time in which, you know, there's, there's cultural significance, right? People are thinking about giving on Giving Tuesday, um, but it, it, it means being able to create a specific type of campaign or some type of incentive uh, for those individuals to engage with your nonprofit on that particular day. Um, because, you know, we all know, right, we're all in this space that we know when Giving Tuesday comes, there's just so many messages. And it's great to have this, this day in which um, the world is paying attention to us as nonprofits and, and particularly paying attention to us um, in the nonprofit world who are uh, who, who have this challenge of fundraising. Um, so, you know, I would not a specific tactic, but more of a, a, of a, of a strategy to keep in mind is, is the ongoing uh, nurturing and stewardship throughout the year allows you to take advantage um, of these, these tactical moments, these uh, bigger moments that, that are either being created by, you know, bigger cultural phenomenons or that you get to create yourself. Fantastic. And now, you know, along this line, here's a question for Lindsay, um, you know, about content. And I'm sure a lot of folks are kind of overwhelmed. And, and even again, whether you're a single person, or you're a part of a large organization, just, you know, I, I, do you have any thoughts on how to draft effective fundraising messages, you know, particularly emails and short videos? Any thoughts as to length, content, or tone? How would you recommend, you know, people approach that? Lindsay, any thoughts? Sure, yeah. Um, I think the most important thing um, is to really keep that branding aspect in mind. Um, and when it comes to developing what your message is, just be true to your mission. So whatever it is you're trying to accomplish should be the very first thing that people are able to take away from whatever form of communication they're receiving from you, be that email, direct mail, social media post, text message. You just really want to convey the good that you are trying to make happen 
And then right after that, tell people how they can support your organization and get you there. And the the more that people are able to see um, the impact of their donation, both you know before and after actually giving, the more likely they're going to be to make a larger donation, to donate again, and to spread the word about your cause and your campaign. Fantastic. And now here's a question I think for, for Jeremy. Um, you know, we have some, some folks that have, say, you know, larger, I mean, sorry, older populations, um, you know, of donors that are not necessarily millennials or young folks, and they worry about, you know, their adoption of media and their willingness to, you know, use text and mobile. What's your recommendation on how best to engage, you know, older donors with some of these new technologies? Yeah, I would say uh, the most important thing is to set realistic expectations. You will actually be shocked how many uh, baby boomers um, and even greatest generations, specifically ones that have smartphones, which are people that tend to have higher income, um, are already using mobile technology. They are making financial transactions on their phones, uh, and they're communicating with their kids and their grandkids um, with text messaging. And so the most important thing is that you are not um, over-soliciting people. If people want to receive text messages, send them text messages. If they want to receive email, send them email. Uh, if they want to receive direct mail, send them direct mail. But the idea is that you would communicate, intentionally communicate different with different demographics um, because the truth of the matter is, and this is especially true at Mobile Cause, that we're actually uh, all about reaching a new generation of donors. One of the incredible um, statistics that is quickly approaching is that 70% of all potential donors in the U.S., that is 70% of the workforce, uh, in the next couple of years, will be exclusively millennials and Generation X. And so if you're not thinking about how you build your donor days, uh, how, how you get people engaged in non-monetary ways now that are younger, that have lower incomes, uh, it, will, it will hurt you in the future. And if you do it, all you're doing is you're supplementing the fundraising success that you already have. Um, I'd like to actually add a couple of comments specifically to the first two questions. Um, Giving Tuesday is all about ambassadors. It's all about the planning and the preparation that you do to empower your ambassadors with their own crowdfunding pages. And so, for example, if you have 100 people that, ha that, have all, uh, that all have a crowdfunding page set up and they have their toolbox where they know they have pre-planned messages and photos and videos to share, and then you unleash them uh, on Giving Tuesday to their networks of friends and family and supporters, uh, and you encourage them along the way and you keep them updated uh, with results, you will have, you, you can raise as much money on Giving Tuesday as you do for the whole rest of the year. And then use Giving Tuesday specifically to kick off your year-end campaign. Um, every nonprofit should be doing this. The, the inventors of Giving Tuesday at Stanford, that was their intention. And so if you, haven't, if you haven't done Giving Tuesday, don't think of Giving Tuesday as just something that you post and a link that you post, but think of it as you, need, you, you want to build a team of ambassadors that are going to go out and ask their uh, people for donations. Um, specifically in terms of your brand, it is – uh, the, the most powerful thing you can do as a nonprofit, in my opinion, as the creative director at Mobile Cause, is just to is to is to capture raw footage, uh, whether that be photographs or video or, or testimonies of people that are affected by the good you do. Uh, the main reason why people don't give is because they don't understand the impact that a donation will make, uh, and a video is literally worth a billion words. Um, if you can capture a child uh, or or somebody in the field or or a family. Um, or a worker uh, 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 in, that, that serves in your nonprofit, and you can capture that passion and that pure emotion, you're going to inspire people to give. And then once they're inspired, it is so important to make it incredibly easy to give across all channels, as we've previously discussed. Uh, apologies for the long answer. Chris, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thanks, Jeremy. And, you know, that is a fantastic answer that I would encourage everyone to listen to uh, again when we send you the recording of what Jeremy just said there. In all of the webinars we've done, that's sort of the recurring theme is really sharing the impact, uh, you know, that your organization has. Um, that's really the best way to, you know, engage donors and then making it easy to give. Those two points are probably one of the common threads that have come across from all of the experts that we've had on these webinars. 
Um, so I would encourage all of you to, you know, try and put that into action. And so that said, you know, um, Cody, here's a question to you. It, you know, how do you help, you know, smaller organizations with few staff, and I'm sure everyone feels like un understaffed no matter how, what their size is. How do you recommend people prioritize the things to do? Yeah, that, that's a great question, Chris, and, and actually one we come across quite a bit. Um, I, I think it, it's it's a couple of things. One is being realistic about um, what you can do, um, understanding the resources that you have available. Um, and then part of that is, is you know, not being distracted by by the shiny objects, right? The, the, especially the digital space where where media cause you know really focuses. Um, there are new products. There are new um, platforms. There are new ways to reach people all the time. And I think one of the the things that um, can be um, detrimental to s smaller nonprofits who don't have the resources to to be on all the platforms is that they think they need to. Um, and as, as we all know, these platforms, they take, you know, they're, they're, they take a lot to make them go. It's, it's a content um, burden. It is a, an engagement burden that's created. Um, and that burden is a burden if you can't do it. It's an amazing opportunity if you can provide the type of content and provide the type of engagement for your supporters. Um, so what I would say is, is focus on a couple platforms that you know you can do well, um, that you know you have the resources, the type of content. Um, that will will allow you to be successful. If, if you don't have access to you know great photos and the ability to to continually produce you know more photos, then Instagram is probably not going to be a good platform for you. Um, if you know same thing with like YouTube, if you don't have great access to videos, then that's probably not going to be a good platform for you. So um, I I would suggest also the Google Ad Grant program um, is a tremendous first step for any nonprofit that is trying to one build up their kind of internal um, knowledge base around digital marketing because what the google grant program does is it solves one very important problem is it gets more eyes and ears uh, uh, to your website right more eyes and ears uh, to your organization and your mission so that google grant program um, is ten thousand dollars a month in free advertising that google gives out now um you know i don't work for google um I advocate it because it's also always such a strong tool for those smaller organizations that are that are, are just getting started because what that does is it opens up um, a lot of opportunities to understand how digital um, and, a, and a, a digital centric model can be really effective for scale and for growth um, that you know takes into account the fact that you know not all nonprofits have uh, a ton of money to be able to go out and, and, and be successful in different platforms. Fantastic. And, and, you know, here's a couple of questions, I think, also that are a little bit related. You know, you talked earlier about segmentation, right? And, you know, do you have any thoughts on, you know, how do you get, get data to be able to segment, you know, your audience and your donors, right? Like, you know, do you have any suggestions for how to, you know, get more intelligence out of the lists that you have? Do you survey people? You know, what ways do you try and capture, you know, for example, age? So you can segment people properly. Any yeah, yeah. That? yeah, sure. This is a uh, this is uh, this is one of those wheelhouse questions. Um, so I appreciate you uh, giving me this one. I think um, data and, and especially um, around digital tools. You, you probably as nonprofits, you probably already have more data than you realize. Um, and the 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 issue becomes being able to create segmentations that make sense for your organization. So. Um, how you know media cause kind of goes about uh, about this process is creating what we you know what what uh, marketing folks call personas right and it's it's a very you know kind of simple process that you know takes some heavy lifting but it's looking at your data and it's it's trying to find the ways in which you can segment your um, your audience by how they engage or how they um, care or why they care about your organization so it may go beyond just age it may go beyond location it may be you know getting into the reasons why now age location you know general demographic information is really really important and that should that should definitely be a part of of creating a persona but what you really want to get to is the why why do they care because that allows you to start creating really impactful content um, um, segmentation via email, via social, via direct mail, via all the channels that, that we talked about today, um, that's gonna be able to, to make things resonate. 
Now, specifically about age, I mean, go, uh, there's a couple great, just really simple ways that you guys can do right now. Um, go into the back end of your Google Analytics. Um, they provide great demographic information there. Um, if you have a Facebook account, go into Facebook Insights. Um, they provide a wealth of information about your followers there. Um, now, what I would caveat with all of this, though, is that those are people on your list, and you're going to want to be able to qualify those. Are they donors, though? Because um, you know, not everyone on your on your social channel is going to be a donor. They should be, but they may not be. So you're, you're going to want to be able to qualify these things. So there's there's a ton of data. I think what it really comes down to is being able to um, uh, take the time to analyze it to see what's going to be most effective for your specific organization. Yeah, that's a, those are all great, great points. I think it's critical for people to understand, right? Like the, the social channels will give you some level of insight as to who's visiting, who's consuming your content. But then when it comes to actual donors, I mean, would you suggest potentially, even if it's a direct ask to say, hey, help us help deliver content that's more relevant to who you are. Tell us a little bit more about you. I mean, is that, is that something that you'd suggest or have seen, you know, work well? Yeah, we, we, so I'll give you guys a, a really concrete example with a client of, of ours, the, the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Um, they're, they're an organization that deals um, with, with bird conservation. Um, and, and one of the unique ways that we, uh, we do this, um, and, and we operate persona marketing with them and, and personas specific to donors. Um, and we collect information where we will survey people and we will tie it back to their specific user record on their CRM, right on their, their uh, customer relationship management software. And, and we're constantly trying to ask for more information, to update those records, whether it's on a survey, um, whether it's at, it's at the time of transaction, um, whether it is, you know, f- uh, fun quizzes on their website that just gets people engaged. Um, it's it's about being creative. Um, I see one of the questions in here is is asking for age can be an awkward ask, and it, totally, it, I totally agree with that. Um, I, I think it it becomes uh, being creative in how we get to that ask because the more that we can uh, understand about these users, the better off we're going to be able to segment the messaging. Fantastic. Now, just as a reminder to everybody, we've we've gone over a little bit, but we've got a lot of questions here. So, you know, definitely hang in, ask additional questions here. We'll we'll stay on for another uh, six minutes or so. Um, So question to Lindsay, uh, you know, about live events. You know, a couple of questions have come up about live events. You know, one, you know, how do you get people to attend your event and how do you get them to give? Any thoughts around, you know, best practices in, in, you know, live events and using thermometers? Sure, yeah. Um, I think the key to live events is really getting the word out there. You want to let people know what's going on um, as early as possible, especially for something like your year-end events, because as you guys know, those social calendars fill up really quickly. So really, if you're putting together an event, I'd say, you know, it's only a couple weeks here, but try to aim for November 1st to let your supporters know about it. And then um, as you're inviting people, you know, be sure to send reminders. Don't just send one invite and then expect everyone to show up. Send reminders along the way. Um, Send emails asking people if they're able to attend. Send text text messages. uh, Post things on your your social media profiles. it's also really great even if you're not arranging your um, your ticket sales or your RCPs through Facebook, uh, which I, I would not recommend doing that, but do create a Facebook event. Um, that way it'll be an event that is displayed on your social media profile and when people go to your page, uh, your Facebook page, they can check it out, make it a public event so everyone can see it. And then, um, really outline kind of what the mission of the event is going to be. Don't just invite people to an event and then bombard them with donation apps. Let them know that you're going to be fundraising for whatever it is, um, be it, you know, just an end of year push, a mission that's taking you into 2017, et cetera, et cetera. And then, um, excuse me, um, once they're there at the event, you're going to want to really create that exciting moment of giving, which the mobile cause fundraising, 
which the Mobile Cause Fundraising Thermometer is, is really great for because it gives people that visual representation of their donation as well as the donations that others are making. Um, and it really shows them, like literally, it, the thermometer will fill up. So it shows them the difference that they're making for your cause, um, what they're helping you accomplish, and it creates a really fun, exciting environment that makes people want to give because it becomes this kind of group effort. And that kind of positivity is really contagious and people really, really love that. It makes them feel good about what they're doing. It encourages other people to give and give more, make multiple donations. And it creates um, kind of that, that fun competition aspect as well for everyone to outdo each other and make that thermometer climb and climb and climb. Uh, to help you reach your goal and to help your organization succeed. Terrific. And, that, and you know, along those lines, so, so to you, Jeremy, about sort of the how of doing some of these things, a couple of questions that I just want to make clear to everyone what's available, you know, through Mobile Cause for both, you know, text messaging, um, for thermometers, you know, maybe you, can you just go over a couple of things? Like we had some questions about how do I bulk message people and, and using text message, you know, so maybe you can just, just make clear to everyone what is available for accomplishing some of these um, initiatives through mobile cause. Yeah, great. Thanks for the question. Um, mobile cause is actually an end-to-end -end solution for all types of fundraising campaigns. And so what we do is within mobile cause itself, you can create every any type of form that you need. Uh, custom branding, custom designed, uh, can collect donations, can collect payments, can collect custom forms. And then each one of those forms has a keyword and a short link that you can use to promote across all your channels, as we've been specifically talking about on this webinar for year-end campaigns. Um, to answer the, the specific question about text messaging, um, as I stated earlier, you can start to build your list using keywords, um, collect mobile numbers on forms. And then also, if you have a donor database, um, be, and if you are a nonprofit, as I would assume you'd be on this webinar, uh, you can actually upload those numbers into the Mobile Cause platform, uh, and we will validate which ones of those are mobile numbers. Uh, and then you can manually subscribe them, sending them a message that lets them know that you're going to be communicating with them via text. Uh, and giving them the option to reply stop if they don't want to receive messages. Um, we have seen again and again that when people combined text message reminders with uh, all forms of communication, uh, you get increased response rates because people see your messages. Um, I'd like to make a comment specifically about the question of uh, small versus large nonprofits. Um, I actually have two recommendations, uh, and before I do that, my disclaimer is that I absolutely have a passion for the little guys um, that are out there pounding the pavement, making a difference, um, and are may, might be a little overwhelmed with fundraising because your heart and your passion is for your cause uh, and not necessarily the money. Um, so here, here are my two recommendations. My first recommendation is lean on technology like mobile cause. Um, you can literally, we, we have a ton of customers that are literally just one person employee, one, one, one person nonprofits. And, and with, by signing up for a plan with mobile cause, by making an investment in mobile cause, you have a, an, an, you have an entire team of webmasters, marketers, strategists and trainers that are available to ensure that you follow best practices that we have learned from thousands and thousands of campaigns that we've run for our other customers across all segments of nonprofits in the U.S. Um, the other thing that you can do as a small nonprofit um, is you, similar to the way that corporations uh, want to partner with charities to increase their, their image and their brand in a community, you have a ton of donors that are under the age of 35, specifically millennials, that want to do more than just give. This is a phenomenon with millennials that we actually, I say we because I'm 34, that we actually care more about serving than about giving. And when we serve, we tend to give and give more. And so ask um, I would say once you've come up with a strategy with your team, uh, go out and ask your young supporters to build their resumes, portfolios uh, with um, with videos and photography, et cetera, et cetera, that they make for you. And you will be pleasantly surprised that you actually have people that would love, love, love to do that for you. 
Terrific. And this is a great insight. And, you know, we have hit uh, about 16 minutes after the hour. Um, so I would like to thank everyone for attending. Remind all of you to reach out for more expert uh, advice on specifics for you and what you're trying to accomplish and how you can do so through Mobile Cause. Again, you can call us at 888-661-8804 or go to mobilecause.com slash demo. Um, I also wanted to remind all of you to connect with Cody at Media Cause. Uh, you can reach him at Cody at MediaCause.org. Um, so again, thanks to everyone for participating today. Stay tuned for future webinars. And please do check us out at MobileCause.com slash demo. Have a great day, everyone, and thanks again.